What's up everybody? This is Moto Slave and I'm here to give you a tutorial on how to program the Roland JX3P. This is a digitally controlled analog synthesizer. So it's got analog oscillators that are controlled by a chip that stabilizes the tuning. So it doesn't go out of tune. You don't have to send it in somewhere to get retuned every few years. Uh, so that's a big plus. Downside to DCOs not so apparent on this synth, but the 8P down here, it is a little bit more apparent, but I'll get to that in another video. So, the way you edit this thing is via one slider here, and this set of numeric pads, and this diagram here that lays out all of your parameters. Your cutoff frequency, your resonance, your LFO modulation, envelope modulation, pitch follow, you got your envelope generator down here, chorus effect, LFO controls. Over here you got all your oscillator selections. You can you know change the waveform, detune it, all that good stuff. It's got some cross modulation. And then so basically you use this to select your parameter. See here we have the cutoff frequency of the filter is number one of group B. So you go over here and select group B and number one. And you'll see this light right here is where the parameter is at currently. I'm going to set this down so I can edit and hit the keys at the same time. Okay, so we selected our filter. Our uh, value now it's at nine. So you can see with this sensitivity slider, you move that up and down to change the filter. And you'll see it moves along and lights up as it goes. So let's let's keep the filter at four. Let's uh, check our resonance, which is group B number four. So I just select four. And then with the same slider. So pretty simple. Let's uh, add some LFO modulation to that. Select two. Right now it's at one. It's not. It doesn't have any at all. All the way up to sixteen. You can hear what that does. Let's do a little bit subtle. Let's change the attacks, I mean the uh, de the rate of that LFO, which is parameter number 12. Right now it's pretty high. So basically the way these different groups are set up is that the group B is just stuff that modifies the waveform and group A is the waveform generator so that's where you select the type of waveform so let's and there are two oscillators here oscillator 1 and 2 so let's select group A and parameter 2 which allows us to select our waveform um, and then that's you can see is a uh, not controlled by the slider but controlled by the bank buttons over here. So right now it's a pulse wave. Let's change that to a square wave on oscillator one. And oscillator two It's also a pulse wave. So let's keep that a pulse wave and then let's select parameter number seven and do some cross modulating. So we're going to cross modulate the two different waveforms to create a new sounding waveform. So there's sync mode and then there's metal mode. Metal mode I think just means cross modulation. Let's try sync mode. <laughs> modulation. So 
so not a whole lot of difference between the two in that specific case, but sometimes, depending on what you have selected, it can make all the difference. All right, so I undid that cross modulation that I just did because now I want to show you the detuning that you can do with oscillator 2, and you're not going to really hear that when the cross modulation is on. So I'm going to select group A parameter 8, and this is good for making uh, some nice harmonic fat sounds. Also, use the LFO and the envelope generator to control the pitch of the waveform of the oscillator. So let's uh, take oscillator 1 and turn on the LFO control of the pitch. It's good for sound effects, um, or if you do it if you go into group B and change the rate of the LFO, you can get a nice, like, subtle wobbly detuning effect. Alright, turn, I turn the uh, value of the LFO down so that it's very subtle. Also do it by the envelope instead of the LFO. So that's parameter four. I'll turn that on. Let's uh, go and change the envelope settings and see how that changes the character of that. So I'm going to change the attack, I'm going to make the attack a lot slower. So this is a fast attack, slow attack. So I just turned that envelope control of the pitch off. So now we're back to our normal sound. But we did change our envelope settings, so that affected the overall structure of the sound. You can hear how it's changed. Let's use the uh, envelope modulation not to control the pitch, but to control the filter. So that's group B, parameter 5. Right now we've only got it a little bit. Let's turn that up. Let's turn 
grind down that release a little bit. Decay down. Let's make this a shorter, more percussive sound. So this is a cool sound to use to demonstrate another cool thing about the 3P, which is its onboard sequencer. It doesn't have an arpeggiator or anything like that, but with, with this onboard sequencer, you can approximate an arpeggiator and do a whole lot more with it. I think it's a 127 step sequencer, so you can do a lot with it. You can overdub with it. Um, you know, it's simple but effective. Unfortunately, there's no, you know, LCD screen or anything like that. So the rate, the speed, BPM is pretty much you got to match it by ear, or you got to have something triggering it via a CB gate, which I don't have anything to do that. So. We're just going to use this sound to program a little sequence in here. You just select the right button. Well, first let me turn off my uh, parameter editing so I can see it on here because it'll show you the same way it shows you the parameter values. It'll show you the steps in the sequence along this, these lights here. And we're just going to do a simple sequence. Just press start and this is what you get. Another cool thing that you can do with the sequencer is you can use the key transpose button to change it while it's playing. So let's start our sequence. So we started out with the preset number one string patch and we edited it down to create this nice little patch, relatively quick and easy. And so now the last thing to do is to save it. Um, luckily there are two banks to save on, C and D bank, 16 memory slots in each bank, and uh, you can also dump that to tape tape memory or to your computer hard drive these days, plug it straight into the computer, um, you know, and then you have more space, you can load it up when you need it. So we're going to save this patch we just made here. I'm going to write group C and I think slot 11 is empty. So here's our new sound. We went from this to this. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It's just a little bit of what you can do with the JX3P and a little overview of how to program it. It's a little bit more tricks once you really get the hang of it, but that's basically the long and short of it. So I hope you enjoyed this and be sure to check back again when I do a demo for the Roland JX-8P.